good to see you again. Welcome to the closing bell. Good to see you as well. Man, I feel like this interview could be so different if it was just a week ago. And here we are. We're only 10 points away from a new closing high on the S&P. Are you a believer? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's easy to see that um, with 40 percent more broad money in the U.S. system than was here two years ago, um, I'm a monetarist at heart. So uh, there sure is a lot of money out there chasing uh, any dip. Oh, so so that just trumps everything. I mean, did we so then we overreacted to the Omicron news and maybe to the chairman Powell as well on the Hill. He seemed to scare a lot of people into thinking that rate hikes and tapering were going to come much faster than people ex had expected. Yeah, they, they may try to do that. Uh, but I think, look, you already see 20 year and 30 year uh, rates inverted. And and uh, if you go back and reread Bernanke's famous helicopter speech, you'll remember that he said we should avoid the zero lower bound at all costs. And if you do somehow end up at the zero lower bound, you need to you need to uh, uh, leave it as quickly as possible. Well, we clearly didn't didn't uh, uh, follow any of that advice. And my view is that it's it's not the absolute change in rates that matters. It's the percentage change from from where you start. And so I believe the Fed will be able to move rates 50, 75 basis points and the curve will flatten and potentially even invert. And so I think we're stuck with negative real rates for a very long time. And I think that's just a natural consequence of the Fed's largesse. And the stock market over the next few years during that time does what? Yeah, I think if you look at periods of time, whether you're looking at stagflation or whether you're looking at uh, inflationary periods of time, the stocks keep up with about 80% uh, of the, call it, uh, negative real rate uh, effect. Uh, so I think, I think that people need to be focused on, more on hard assets and more on hard productive assets and maybe even using some leverage to acquire those assets. I mean, when I think about defending myself from... Uh, call it uh, low double-digit inflation and 0% yields, i.e. 10% plus negative real rates. Um, I think you really, today's investors haven't had to really think about that, but I think you and I and, and everyone else that has to go spend money on what we spend money on, whether it's food or fuel or travel or uh, accommodations, you see that uh, the value, the value of purchasing power of our, of our capital has depreciated massively in the last two years, and it's only going to worsen from here.